Hello and welcome back to Reykjavik Newscast. My name is Josiane Gatens and I'm a journalist with the Reykjavik Grapevine. Uh, but of course, actually today we're not in Reykjavik. And this is East Iceland Newscast, perhaps. We're here at Stuðlagil Canyon. Um, it's a very famous spot. You might have seen it in Instagram posts about Iceland. And it's really beautiful. We're out in the east doing... a some sort of reconnaissance missions for our Best of Iceland, uh, which if you haven't checked out, I'll put the link in the description. It tells you everything you need to know about traveling around Iceland and all the best spots. And of course, we can't do that without researching. So we're here. Um, and I'm going to go into the news in a bit, but uh, one of the things we're going to talk about is the earthquake swarms uh, just off of the coast of Grimsey in North Iceland. And of course, there's a lot of excitement around this. We don't know what it's going to mean in terms of a new eruption or what whatever else could happen but I wanted to let you know about our newsletter. Um, it's written by one of my colleagues Helgi, he does a great job, it's really funny and as well as giving you uh, a really quick overview of all the things that we're writing and talking about, um, it also is where if there is a new eruption we will, be, we will tell you within the hour. That's our promise to you. So if you sign up to the newsletter, you will know about any volcanic activity that uh, emerges in Iceland. So I'll put the link to that in the description too, and you can go check that out. But we've got lots of news to talk about, so let's get to it. Like I said, uh, the first thing that we have to talk about today is the earthquake swarm near Grimsey. Now, um, today marks a week since the earthquake earthquakes began, um, and uh, I should just mention actually, Grimsey is this uh, small island just off the north coast of Iceland. Excuse me, sorry. Um, and it's actually the only part of Iceland that's in the Arctic Circle. So it's kind of amazing. It shouldn't be confused with Grimsey, which is a Hebridean island uh, in Uist, which is where I used to live. Um, but obviously the similar names obviously indicates the close ties between Scotland and Iceland there. But Grimsey, yeah, so it's been having these, uh, these crazy earthquakes. Um, since the start a week ago, over 9,500 earthquakes have been recorded, and the largest of which was of magnitude 4.9, which is really quite big, um, and that was on the night of September 8th. Um, after this, a state of uncertainty was declared by Civil Protection. Um, that's the, the agency that kind of does a sort of overview of, of any kinds of risks, uh, volcanic or, or otherwise, in Iceland. Um, it involves uh, representatives from the police, from uh, different state departments. And so they declared this state of uncertainty and they deployed a Coast Guard vehicle, um, a, a Coast, Coast Guard ship called Thor, um, and that's been stationed off the coast uh, since the 8th, as I said, just in case of any potential evacuation that needs to take place. But also they said kind of just... To, provide some kind of reassurance to people there. Um, does this mean there's going to be an eruption? We don't know, basically. Um, nobody really wants to put too fine a point on it, as with all of these things. Um, there's a lot of different geological activity going on in Iceland all the time. And uh, if there are earthquakes or so on, they can indicate that there might be a volcano, but it could just be something else going on. It doesn't mean that there's going to be an eruption right now. Um, but obviously that, that is a risk. The area uh, that's the source of these is about 15 kilometres east of Grimsey. Although now, since this activity, other areas do seem to be activating as well. So it could be that, that something's going on, um, but we're just not totally confident. Um, like I said, our newsletter is a really great source of this information and if you sign up to that, you'll get a chance uh, to hear about any, any new eruption that, takes, that occurs uh, within the hour. So thanks to Helgi for sorting that. Um, but we wanted to give you some, some news in East Iceland as well. So 
Let's check out Stuglagel while we're down here and talk about some news from the east. If you can look over here, there's uh, actually quite a lot of trees growing in this area. And that's quite unusual, as you might know. Iceland is not the most forested country, but, the, but East Iceland is kind of different in that regard. Um, and in this area, we, as well as these trees that you're seeing just now, there's also um, uh, there's a forest, and I'm trying to find the name of it. Oh, yeah, it's a really long Icelandic one. Hatlamstadaskogur. Something like that. Valor will, Valor will correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but this is the, the largest forested area in Iceland. It's about 740 hectares. If you have any idea what a hectare is, I'm not quite sure. And not only this, like, normally we joke about Icelandic forests being, you know, the, the joke is if you get lost in an Icelandic forest, what do you do? You stand up. But the trees in this area are really quite large. Wow, this is totally amazing. This waterfall over here is so cool. So as well as having these large trees, uh, the forest is also quite dense in some parts. And um, the head of the fire brigade in Mula thing, I'm probably saying that wrong too, has voiced fears of possible forest fires that could be extremely challenging to, ca to tackle. So Mula thing is a municipality in East Iceland and it's here that this forest is located. Um, within the forest there are residential areas um, including a hotel and farms as well. Um, so obviously there's, there's real importance in making sure that any fire that that uh, would break out in this area could be tackled. Um, but the, because of the denseness of the forest and the fact that there's very few fire breaks and paths, there are some areas that this um, head of the fire department feels would be very difficult for his firefighters to get to. That being said, um, awareness around forest fires has been growing in Iceland in recent years. And there's been a lot of preparedness uh, that's come with that. So the Forestry Association has reported that uh, this has been taken into consideration when thinking about planning new forests um, and there have been fire breaks and rivers and slower burning deciduous trees um, implemented into forest planning. Um, and training has also been delivered to a number of fire departments. Um, and in addition to this, civil defence uh, our civil protection, as I was talking about earlier, it's the same same agency, slightly different translations. Um, they have teamed up with the fire brigade uh, to send out warnings if about the risk of wildfires if it's dry. Um, and Iceland, although you know it's not the warmest place, you might think forest fires here, but uh, it's actually quite a dry country. We don't get a lot of rainfall, um, and so if it is particularly dry and there's a risk of forest fire, they will be teaming up with the fire brigade and the Met Office to send out these warnings to people. Where should we go now, Hart? Back over here, have a look. And I also wanted to talk about something that you don't often hear about in Iceland, in addition to uh, forests, and that's bombs. Um, very weirdly, there have been reports of bombs and explosions in South Iceland. Um, and this has happened in a, in a town called Selfoss, uh, which is one of the largest towns in the south. It's got fantastic food hall, it's, it's a, a really nice place. Um, but the, the police in this area have been investigating the remains of explosive devices that have been found. And they say that these indicate that there, there's evidence of homemade bombs, um, as well as the corrosive substances that are used, uh, that could be used to create them. Um, the materials that are used for these, these uh, devices are mixed together in soda bottles and other closed plastic containers. 
Um, and the, during the chemical reaction that then takes place in the containers, a lot of gas is formed and this causes an explosion. This is what the police are saying anyway. Now, there doesn't seem to be any concern from the police that this is linked to any kind of criminal activity or um, caused with some kind of terrorist intent or anything. Rather, they're actually sending warnings out to parents um, to, to tell them to look out for any potential activity that their children might be involved in, as well as to warn them of the risks of this, should they ever consider it. Um, and uh, it's still incredibly concerning because these homemade bombs can cause serious in injury. If they explode in your hand, then that's pretty un unpleasant. And of course, the caustic materials that are in them, if they land on skin or eyes or anything, like just bad, basically. Don't want to take that risk. Um, but uh, the yeah, there doesn't seem to be any any criminal investigations going on here. It's more uh, a, a case of um, police are asking parents to monitor whether their children are had, handling such substances um, and also asking the public for information in relation to loud bangs they might have heard or um, any unusual activity. And lastly, they have also said that people who might find unopened plastic bottles, uh, which could indicate that they contain suspicious substances, should not move them and contact the emergency line immediately. So, if you are in South Iceland and you're in Selfoss and you come across an unopened plastic bottle, please do not touch it. Please be very careful. Um, you know, we, we don't know what's going on at the moment, so we just have to uh, wait and see. So, that's all from us in East Iceland. Um, this is an incredibly beautiful area. Um, you, you've definitely seen Instagram pictures of this. Um, we're here for a few more days, but we'll be back in Reykjavik next week and Valor will be back with you then to do another newscast. Please remember to check out our newsletter, as I said, and I'll also put the links to purchase our Best of Iceland magazine in the description as well, as, all, as well as all other information from this episode. Like, comment, subscribe, of course, and we'll see you next week.